Alright, what's up guys? We are back for another video for a nice sunset ride after getting this is our first ride after getting the first service done so so far feeling pretty good wish they'd clean this intersection up so it's not so dirty I am struggling with the uh, gear shifter because on the FTR so on this one it's kind of out from the bike on the FTR it was like in so it's different and on the big bikes you had a whole floorboard so it's definitely a different feel and so do I hate it after being on such nice bikes No. Um, it's still a fun bike. I, pay, I paid not a lot for it. Um, and I think that's really the draw to this bike. Is that it doesn't cost a whole lot. There's You can do some pretty cool stuff to it to make it look cool. Um, and it's fairly cheap to do that stuff. The most expensive things I have on this bike are my exhaust which you don't need to spend that much um, that was just a personal preference the shorty GP sounds it's just about right I just the TBR the two brothers racing a I've always wanted one and B it just takes that edge off that just that tad bit of harshness while leaving leaving the volume there so I love it for that reason. I will say the nicer bikes definitely gave me a, a better sense of what good suspension is like. I think the suspension on the Rebel is notoriously bad. Even on the 1100, which doesn't make any sense, a bike that costs nine grand should have perfect suspension. Um, but I still see people having trouble with Rebel 1100 suspension. For that reason since I don't want to mess with it when I can just buy a better bike once I'm off this I'll probably just not like I, I wanted I've wanted a 1100 but like I probably will just go with something else simply for the fact that the rebel suspension is not great uh, and I don't feel like messing with changing suspension um, when you can just go out there and buy a bike that's set set up good right out of the box. Um, but one thing I wanted to talk about in today's video is the demo day so I wanted just to just to uh, clarify a little bit about what happened um, exactly at the demo day what I thought of the bikes I got some kids here I think her sister was yelling at her that boy wanted some throttle my bike ain't got no pep in third gear I tried <laughs> there we go
guys knew this was going to happen. I was going to forget what I was thinking about. Anybody who's watched me on this road already knew that was coming. Anyways, so. Oh my, I, every time. I need to remember that bump's there too. Anyways. Um, so, at the start of that video, I was on what I thought to be an Indian pursuit. Turned out that was not the case. Um, I was on a Roadmaster Limited. Um, I thought, I, I, me and my buddy could have sworn I was on a pursuit because they had a pursuit there that looked the, exactly the same. It was red, red paint like that, and then it was all chrome. Um, apparently, I just wasn't paying that close of attention to the lower fairing when I was getting on the bike. Um, but yeah, I mean, that bike had literally pretty much the same features as a Pursuit. It had the heated and cooled seats, the heated grips. Um, the adjustable windscreen, it just had a fork mounted fairing was the main difference. And it, uh, the Pursuit weighs more. Um, so I had to go, a guy in the comments pointed it out to me, which thank you to that guy. So I went back and looked and I was like, man, now that he says that, I'm really pretty sure I didn't ride a Pursuit, which sucks because that's what I wanted to do. But I at least got to ride a Challenger Dark Horse, which is a bike I've been wanting to ride for a long time. And I got to ride an FTR. Um, if it were me, I'd want a Challenger or a Pursuit Dark Horse. Dark Horse is my style, but I like the features that were on the Roadmaster Limited in the Pursuit. The Challenger Dark Horse had some of those features too. Um, but of course, and the other ones cost more. I'd probably get a Challenger Dark Horse. I don't. I, the so I have a fiance, so um, if I wanted, if we were going to go on a ride, which obviously we don't on the Rebel, but um, if we were going to, it'd be nice to have that passenger seat with the backrest. Um, the FTR. I love and I'm for my next bike thinking whether I want that a CB1000R an MT09 or MT10 something along those lines I don't think I'll get a Harley um, other than uh, Harleys are stupid popular around where I live I think it's mainly because of well A we have a Harley dealer near us uh, B, it's like kind of it's like a culture thing almost in the area. Um, and honestly, I think another part of it is the sound. The sound of uh, like Harley is you don't get that with many other bikes. Even a Jap bike, most of them don't sound like that. Um, when you make when a loud Harley, is just absolutely just with a big engine is just absolute thunder rolling down the road and that part I get about why people love them <sighs> dude the suspension on this bike is trash that's the worst part on this bike um, and that's something I re recognized as soon as I got on those bikes the FTR suspension blew me away and it, it shouldn't like I know this is a cheap bike but Honda if there's one thing you should be getting right on a motorcycle it's the engine 
and the suspension. And this, for what this is, is not cheap. Like, you could buy a better bike for cheaper than this. Uh, so I, I see the flaw in that area. Um, it's still a, a fun bike to ride. So I see why, I also see why people like them. I mean, I like it, obviously. They look cool. They sound cool when you throw an exhaust on it. They're cheap, relatively. Um, none of the bikes I rode this weekend were anywhere close in price. Um, and they're just e they're also easy to ride. They have a nice seating position. They're not particularly comfortable, especially when you first buy it. Um, so yeah. It's getting like easier for me to, with the 500 miles I've put on this so far, to point out the good, the goods and the and the bads. Um, and I don't know. I mean, I still think if you spend the money that it costs to buy one of these, don't beat yourself up too much even if you end up not liking it because it's still a honda somebody will still buy it down the road a beginner or something you'll still get decent money out of it and you'll still have a decent time riding it if you ride with other people you might get blown out of the water but that's to be expected i wish i could go down there and get a picture But I wonder if I can pull off to the side here and get a picture. Let's see. Cool. That was a good picture spot. I think we will use that picture to let you guys know when we are doing a um, just regular ride down our regular road. use different pictures for events like the demo day um, and I want to just keep doing these videos um, I wonder if Pete's out today Frank over there staring at me worst part about where Pete lives there's always stuff on the ground but uh Yeah, no idea where I was or what I was talking about. I'm sure it was probably the demo day or something. Completely lost my train of thought. Like, uh, in case you guys haven't noticed, I have ADHD, so my brain, I can kind of scatterbrained and I forget what I was talking about. Um, well, it's also pretty hard when you're writing. But, so let me just, I don't know, I don't know, my brain's fried, brain's broken. Pretty birds. Just look at this, this view, this is perfect. And I'm just out cruising right now. Um, I don't know, maybe there is some kind of, uh, like, lightness is also, 
I feel like it might be a pro and a con. So, I feel like part of what made those bikes feel more stable is their weight. Like, this bike's light in comparison. So I don't know if... Maybe that's part of the... Why I liked the way those bikes felt better. Uh, I, I mean, on a sport bike, I think lightness is kind of needed. But on a bike like this, well, I guess with a smaller engine, you need less weight. But aside from that, I think they should have put a bigger engine in the Rebel. And better, bigger engines, better suspension. I mean, I don't mind the smaller engine, but... If you can't make a small engine make good power like KTM, then you need to come up with something else. Like 45 horsepower, not that great. And I know that's like an American thing, like thinking that 45 horsepower is not enough. But I mean, look where I'm riding, guys. There ain't nobody out here. Uh, I'm not riding in some city. Um, but yeah. That's my opinion on the Rebel. Pretty much. Do I regret it? No. Do I think it's the best bike ever? No. Not by a long shot. Um. Do I think... There's better bikes for the money? Um, maybe. A new bike? I don't, there might be a, a new bike that's better for the money. I would need to ride more bikes in the price range. Especially cruisers. I've never been on a Vulcan. Um, I don't think I would like a Vulcan better than this. Other than it looks a little bit more comfy, but I like the looks of this better. So, yeah. Anyways, I'm going to keep moving on to the next topic, which is um, Honda. And I'm going to be throwing some pictures in here because I think that might spice up the video a little bit. Um, ooh, ran over a stick. Um, Honda revealed at least uh, M Honda Motorcycle Spain revealed a thing for a new Hornet possibly and that I think is pretty awesome um, I don't know how that ties in with the CB1000 I think it might look similar be similar um, but I love the look of the Hornet. I love that bike that Yami Noob and Spite just re like uh, revised that old, uh, the Hentai Hornet. Um, and now it just looks amazing. I love that paint that's on it. And I think a new Hornet would be absolutely awesome. Um, I'm wondering if it might end up being an electric bike, though. That's what I'm kind of afraid of. Because that's what is happening a lot lately is manufacturers are, although I don't know about bikes, but a lot of car manufacturers are bringing back nameplates and making it something electric, which is lame. Um or just making it something that it's completely not like the Ford Maverick but I say that but I love the new Ford Maverick but I don't think anybody really loved I mean I'm, I, I'm sure there's somebody that loved the old Maverick but it's not like the Mustang um, I like what they did with the Maverick so I don't know it could be good it could be bad I don't I don't like it if they make it electric I like my gas bikes. Do whatever you want with cars. 
I mean, I like gas cars too, but if I have to give up, I mean, I shouldn't have to give up either, honestly. Like, cars are the least of the problem. Like, there's way bigger things polluting than cars and motorcycles. And if you're California, you think lawnmowers and freaking crap like that's the problem. No, it's not. And you know it. It's the companies that make huge amounts of money uh, and they don't care about the environment because that costs money and they don't so they just pay you off so you don't care but you then act like you care and screw over citizens but I'm getting political and I don't really feel like doing that so I'm just gonna move on um, so Harley may be unveiling a 975 revolution motor for the Sportster. The sport, the new Sportster unveils on April the 12th. Um, I love the new Sportster S. I went and saw the Pan Am. I loved the look of the Pan Am. They're probably going to screw the bike over like Harley does with every other motorcycle and overprice it and under okay I can't say underpower it because the Pan Am and the sports dress make good power so it might make good power they're still gonna overprice it because Harley is uh, well a bunch of potatoes um, like I know Harley makes a quality product but other people make just as good products for less money and if you want to sell bikes to people and they go hey this bike costs this much money and it drives like this which is nearly identical to what this Harley drives like but the Harley is $5,000 more. Why would I buy that? And I know Harley's thinking is... Uh, HD. Uh. And yeah, that works for some people. But that's not going to work for most people, Harley. Like, come on. And I want to see Harley succeed because... Like, I love Indian, too. Indian is... I, I love seeing a, a nice American bike done right, priced right. I think even Indian's a little overpriced. I'm not going to say that Harley's much better. Or that Indian's much better. Sorry. Um, the Jap bikes are definitely priced the best. Best. Um... Ducati and Aprilia are a little overpriced too. Triumph. I think they're riding that line. They kind of get ride that fine line of overpriced and premium price. Um, and I think premium price is a good place to be, not overpriced. So it's kind of like Apple. Apple, okay, sorry. Didn't want it, shouldn't have gone there because Apple is straight up overpriced in some cases. Their iPhone, though, is just about the same. So, I don't think the iPhone is overpriced. Um, but yeah, I think this motor that they might be unveiling is cool. Uh, I will drop pictures of what they have unveiled so far. Uh, I know there's a link on their Instagram to like join the reveal and watch it. Um, and I think it's cool that they're coming out with these new motors. Um, and just making it like something a better product. Because their motors are pretty outdated. Um, and 
they're but they're bikes that like Harley. Your problem is that's not your biggest problem. It was a problem, but not your biggest. Your biggest problem is your price. People, well, most people do not want to spend twenty to thirty thousand dollars on a motorcycle. We want to spend five, ten, fifteen. Eh, that's good there. Twenty is. You'll get some people up there. Twenty's pushing it, and you can't sit there and tell me you can't make bikes and sell them for twenty thousand dollars and still like a full dresser and still make money. I'm ranting right now, um, but oh, well, anyways. Harley, fix your prices. Um, the last thing I wanted to talk about is my fancy new phone mount. So, if any of you on the Rebel are having trouble with a phone mount and your camera breaking, your optical, your optical image stabilization breaking, this is your solution. Uh, it is expensive, but it does work, so it's hard to put a price on it when there's not really any competition. Um, I loved the mount that I had, worked great, held the phone completely still, which this one doesn't do, but it's if it doesn't break my phone, I don't care. Um, see, so there is some play in it, but that's part of the reason why the phone isn't falling apart anymore um, so there's a, a vibration dampener behind here um, this is a quad lock phone mount uh, I bought this myself by the way um, they do have a code to get like 10% off on their website or if you use honey it'll save you that money automatically that's what I recommend get honey it's great um, which I don't know why I'm I'm advertising for honey too whatever uh, but this is a great phone mount uh, it's pretty simple to use you have to buy a, well actually you don't have to buy a case they do have an adapter to stick to your phone and then you can use this um, so there's a vibration dampener that goes in between the phone and the mount that you also have to buy it's 20 bucks so when I said the, pr the setup is overpriced, it's $109 for the mount, the vibration dampener, and the phone case. Which, so that's not horrible, but not great. I also bought the all blacked out, the pro mount, which uses aluminum instead of some glass filled thing, like fiberglass filled nylon or whatever. Um, and it's, it's blue and black. I bought the all black and aluminum one. So if you if your bike has been messing up your phone, get a quad lock. Um, I've seen Rockform recommended, but they don't have a vibration dampener. So I wasn't going to try it. That's that road that I've missed when I'm doing this ride every time. So I'm going to turn around. <laughs> 